What's up guys, Root of the Null here, and we're looking at even more Python code today. We're continuing our little uh, video series and tutorials, and we've been looking at lists lately. Now, lists are those uh, those data types that hold a lot of variables, and a lot of values, and a lot of information. And they're, they're awesome because you can index these sort of things, and when you index them, you retrieve that value that is at that that certain position that you indexed. Now, when you do this, you can actually reset the current value. You can look over this on the side notes. We have an example, the new list equals uh, 4, 10, 23, and then we set new list 0, which would equal 4, and we change that to 5. So 4 in the new list becomes 5, and the new list eventually equals 5, 10, and 23. So, hey, let's check this out in idle and see what we can do. I am actually going to open up a new program here with Control n Let's save this as a uh, file.python, make this visible, and then make it vanish. Boom. <laughs> and I'll get started with a shebang line. Just to have good practice. So, looks like I got a question mark there. That's kind of weird. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's get started. Actually, I'm going to define a function, just because I think that's a good idea for the moment. I'm going to call it main, because I like that word, you know? It's pretty. It's got a. Uh, it's got four letters. <laughs> All right. So hey, we got a new list here, and our new list can equal, let's say, uh, John, Doug. Actually, let's make this a multi-line thing just so we get into that that practice, that idea. New list can equal John. Let's say, and then a uh, Doug. Tucker, um, Brian, and Tony. And now that's okay to have that comment there, even though we don't have a value afterwards, because that's just the way it can go. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a for loop. <laughs> We're going to use the for loop and go through this new list. Because we can use our in keyword or that membership operator, we can see the elements that are actually in that list. So let's go for item in new list, and let's loop and print out all the items that are inside new list. Let's print out item. And let's actually concatenate on there. Says hi. And let's run this. John says hi, Doug says hi, Tucker says hi, Brian says hi, Tony says hi. Now this is cool because item is being replaced with each value inside the new list. And we can reset this though. We can actually change item to equal, uh, let's say, poop face. Because uh, when I used to play Pokemon, I named all my arch enemies poop face. And now when we're done that, we got poop face says hi over and over and over again. So I'm interested, what is the value of new list now? What is inside new list? If we give it a go. It's still John, Doug, Tucker, and Brian, and Tony, because it's only item that's being manipulated, not the actual things here. But, if we tried this in a different manner, if we actually uh, index this with a while loop, if we did count or equals zero, limit equals... And I want to introduce a new function to you guys here called len, or len. And this will actually retrieve the length of any objects you pass to it. You could send it in a string. And actually, let's print out... print the limit here. So in our case, this will run as 6 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 characters in here. Now we aren't counting this in the way that it normally would though, because normally you'd use that first character as 0, right? If you were, if you were taking in that programmer lens. But it's using that that human readable form because usually we would use this in loops. If we do zero, if we do counters less than limit, it'll still increment six times, but it goes from zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's six when you include that zero. So that's why it uses this six because it expects you to use the less than term. But okay, what we're trying to do here now is trying to try and find the length of new list. Now when we print this out, we have five. Because so we have five elements here. We have John, Doug, Tucker, Brian, and Tony. That's five people. Okay, so now let's do a while loop. Indent this. While counter is less than limit, 
I'm going to remember to increment the counter because I don't want my computer to freeze like it did last time. That was a little embarrassing. And now we can print new limit, new new list, I'm sorry, and we can index with counter. And we can catenate on here says hi. Now when we when we run this, we print this out, it says John says hi, Doug says hi, Tucker says hi, Brian says hi, and this makes sense because we're using that number to index each value inside new list. Now if we remove this little piece here though, remove the print limit because we don't really need that anymore. What if we had done what we were doing before? What if we changed what is the equivalent of item in our loop, which is really new list counter? What if we changed that to poop face? New list item. Remember to uh, remember to index this here. Don't set the entire list to a string. That would be catastrophic. Change it to poop face. Now what it's doing is it's assigning each bit of the of the list to poop face. So when we run this, we get John says hi, Doug says hi, Tucker says hi, Brian says hi because we're printing it before we do this. When we switch it back though, when we actually print it out though, we have poop face, poop face, poop face, poop face, poop face, poop face, I can't even speak, it's a tongue twister. And that's what happens though, because we're using the index thing, we've actually changed every single element inside this new list and changed it to poop face. Because we've used our loop, we've looked at it in the for, with the for loop, we've looked at it in the while loop, and we've introduced some new topics and concepts here though, but this actually wasn't the point of the video. What I'm trying to show you here is that you can uh, assign things in the list while using that list. But that isn't what we're getting at here. What I want to show you is a new sort of data type. This is called a tuple. And a tuple is only useful for retrieving the variables and the values that you save inside that data type. It's a lot like a list in that it's holding multiple values, but it's you can't add any, you can add things to it, but you can't change the value. So let's give it a go. Let's try uh, what you do here. The syntax is the same as if you were for a list, and I'm just going to name the variable new tuple instead. Except you're using parentheses rather than those brackets. So if we if we run this global name new list is not defined. Okay, we have to change it down here. We run this new tuple. We run this, Jug, John, Doug, Tucker, Brian, and Tony, just the way we had it before. But we can't modify any of these. If we tried to, do, if we tried to run our uh, our little while loop here, it'll freak out. Actually, only because we haven't changed it to a new tuple. First of all, tuple, and then change this to new tuple as well. It'll freak out because tuples are not allowed to assign things to the elements of the items that are inside their, you know, their their scope. But you can add things to it. It's 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 strange. If you uh if you have a new tuple, let's uh let's kill these here. Print new tuple to begin with, and then we had let's say n another tuple, which can we can we can just add on there. Let's see, um, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Do we have Kevin? We don't have Kevin. Kevin and Chuck. If we add, if we use the new tuple and then our assignment operator plus equals another tuple, and then we print new tuple once again, this is going to work. This is going to run perfectly fine because. It allows you to add things to the tuple, but it doesn't let you to change. It doesn't allow you to change the values inside it. If we look at, if we just tried to do this very singularly, new tuple, let's say zero. So we're gonna change John in this case. Let's change John to a girl, just because that's funny, ha! <laughs> and uh, we'll run this. Except we'll get an error though, because it's that that's the exact same problem. Tuple does not uh, the tuple objects do not support item assignment, so you can't change the values that are inside their scope. Except you can do that with lists. So uh, part of me wonders what the point of tuples are. I guess it could be a security thing, whether you just don't want to be able to change things inside your array if you're a programmer and you don't want that to happen. But I don't know.
it's interesting to see when a programmer uses these tools and uses these ideas that they're able to use. So um, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you were able to understand this one. I know we covered a lot of ground while using uh, item assignment. We used uh, for loops. We used the while loop and everything. But I, I don't think I've covered on these as much as in, as in much detail as I should have. So I hope you guys will be able to understand this, especially this the for loop here, because that's sort of a crucial thing to know. You can use the for loop to loop through items by using that in operator, the in membership operator. Every item that is inside the list can be accessible by looping in with that, and you can change sort of things like that. But thank you for watching, guys. Thank you so much. It's really great that I have such a such a nice audience, and I'm hoping these things are working for you because under understanding, you're learning new things, and you can start to do some of your own things in Python. But uh. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be awesome if you could give me a like, maybe a comment, maybe subscribe, I don't know, it's, it's whatever you want to do. Uh, it'd be really awesome if you could check me out at my website, nullshell.com, but hey, I'll, I'll stop self-advertising here. Uh, see you again. Goodbye.